This podcast features adults using adult language. You have been warned. Hello and welcome to Hit or Glitch, a podcast where we explore the multiverse of geek culture and experiment with rules and systems. This season, we are exploring a galaxy far, far away. Our heroes finally made it to the local town and discovered these locals are, are more advanced technologically. Tonight, they attempt to uncover what has happened. So you guys wanted to explore the north side of town. Mm-hmm. Yep. Alright, uh, give me a dexterity self test, please. Nope. <coughs> it's not a chance die, right? No, it's not a chance die. I didn't roll one even if it was. Three. Oh, wait, I got two dice. Oh, oh, okay, never mind. I did get one success. Five. Damn. Dude, I rarely ever get exploding dice, and you guys are just like, bang. Well, it didn't explode on that one. I had yeah. seven dice and got two. That's I actually pretty close to average. Three, so. Four dice and, and got five. five. <laughs> <laughs> Two nines and a eight. All right. You guys sort of sneak on in. Sneaking your way in. There's basically one main major thoroughfare through the town. A couple offshoots. About 30 meters away uh, in an intersection, the main thoroughfare and two off, and the, an offshoot streets on either side. It's a statue. The statue is about four meters tall. It appears to be made of stone, and it is a Zabrak. Uh. And he is, in one hand, has a sword, and in the other hand, it is sort of outstretched. Uh, huh. That'll need the plus one to perception on this helmet to see your smug face. <laughs> <laughs> he appears to be wearing... Well, you will notice because you stayed for the history briefing. Okay. You will be able to recognize that the armor that he is wearing is Jedi designed from the Clone Wars. I was just going to ask if I can make him a cult role to see if I know anything about history of this. It would have been an academics. Okay. I will not make that role. But <laughs> you stayed oh, for the briefing. Why, why so. not? I'll, I'll see. It's a chance die. Yay. Let's see what I know. Nothing. I got a three. Okay. okay. Uh, nothing beyond what you were told in the briefing. Okay. So it would appear that the professor was correct. This is a Clone War era of crash, and it appears that there were Jedi in the crash. Was he holding a sword or a light? From the angle that you are viewing it, you cannot tell. Okay. You just see the hand is like down and you see a blade okay it could be a stick from this distance at this angle it could be a stick but in the context of a dude in armor yeah it's most likely a sword Mm -hmm. all right i'm looking for my ship where could my ship be hiding where is my ship uh probably all of the houses have at least a few glass windows all of them have doors of wood and iron Hmm. Manufacturing. There are no electric lights here. But being on the main thoroughfare, you guys will notice there are lights down there. They're on even during the day. I'm heading up. I should most likely somewhere over there. I'm gonna. So you're gonna head to where the entire town is? Yep. I've gotta keep my distance when I see one. (laughs) Yeah, I'll peek through one of the windows as I walk by. Okay. Give me a wits investigation. One. You peek in. Uh, the furnishings appear to be fairly simple. Nothing really ornate. You do, however, notice the wall hanging, which is a painting with a Zabrak prominent in the foreground. In the painting, it's obviously a lightsaber. Mm-hmm. A blue one. And you think it's a Mon Calamari behind him. Hmm. But it's difficult to tell. All right. Continue on. could be a Quarian. It could also be, uh, I think there's a... Uh, Another aquatic species. Well, I guess it could, from the distance you're viewing from, it could also be mistaken a Korean, Syrian. I'll continue down the street, but staying close to one side or the other so that I can get behind cover if necessary. Okay. Uh, Biva is staying on the east side of the road. I'll stay with her. Okay. Uh, I'll stay too. On the east side of the road? Okay. At this particular point, it doesn't appear like any of your compatriots are going to attempt to stop you. How fast are you moving down the road? Not fast. Okay. 
<laughs> I just I wanted to be clear. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm proceeding cautiously. Okay. Yeah, I think I think we're tactical moving this, so every we'll run up to the next thigh, hide a wall, and duck behind it, and then wait half a second, and then jump over it and go to the next one. You're leapfrogging around. <laughs> As you guys get closer to the statue, yeah, you you see that it's a lightsaber. Okay. Cool. Is there um, any kind of plaque on the statue? Like a dirt steel, perhaps. Yes. Is it in basic or zebra? It is in basic. And it says, "Jedi, <clears throat> Jedi Master Falun, apprentice of the Master of Light." In the name. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Well, unless that uh, lightsaber in his hand happens to be an actual lightsaber hilt. Then uh, it really has no interest in me. I mean, we're here for some artifacts, not for a statue that was made about artifacts. You notice also as you get closer and you inspect the plaque, it is not stone. It is like concrete. It's closer to permacrete. Mm. Wow. Obviously, there has been some technology sharing here. Maybe they put these over or built artifacts into them. Hmm. Like if the base is hollowed out, and maybe there's something in there. How would we go about discovering that? It's real simple. You pull out the little uh, a stethoscope, and then you knock on it. <laughs> Not that any of us has a stethoscope. Yeah, short of knocking this over or blowing it up, uh, there's no way to tell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, moving on. Moving right along. Give me a wit's composure. Three. Six. Damn. One, two. One of us is keeping uh, an eye on things. You got two, you got one, and you got three. 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 Okay. One, two, you will not notice, Tim. Okay. The rest of you will notice a figure appears to be trying to shadow you. She's. You will notice it's a she. And you will also notice that she has a pretty bad limp. So she's having really... A tough time keeping up with you guys. You got three. You notice that the figure is not a native, but you're just like trying to quietly go on. You don't notice it. Yeah, I know. No, I'm looking for my ship. I don't care what's behind. And keeping out the locals in front of you. Yeah, I don't care what's behind me. I know nothing's there under my eyes. If there's something there, they can take care of it. Does he notice what species she is? Just make a galactic lore test. Uh, yeah, intelligence galactic lore. Yeah, chance die. <laughs> And that's a three. Okay. Yeah, you can't tell. All right. I'm going to turn around, pull out my chain, walk directly towards her. Who are you? She, like, tries to, she, like, stops, and the, the motion of, like, the rapid stop, like, almost makes her stumble because her walk is so bad. And, like, she turns and, like, starts stumbling toward the door. The door of the nearest I house. I move to intercept her, catch up to her as quick as I can. Okay, you'll be able to do that relatively easily. Because like I said, she doesn't move very quickly. And when I get to her, I'll grab the hood and pull it down so I can see her face. <laughs> she is horribly burned. She ha almost has no lips to speak of. Almost no eyelids. Her ears have burned off. She has no hair much anymore. Like little tufts here and there. And she's like, are you... Th are, are don't hurt me. I can the limp combined with her appearance. I put my chain away and pull out my med pack and say, "Let me take a look." Well, these are long, long scars. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll well, I'll put my chain away and I'm like, well, I can at least look at the limp. Yeah. Or is uh, that like an old yeah. injury as well? Not here, not right now. Okay. Like you would need, like you could take out your med pack, and she's like. She'll relax as you take out the bed pack. Yeah. Are you from the ship that they captured? We are. Do you know where it is? Well, I'm doing this. Can you get out? Like, uh, obviously, she's in pain from what Olymp uh, said. It, you know, something. Painkiller? Like yeah. I'm going to administer it. The sensate. <clears throat> I guess the closest thing would be euphoria. Like, as you hit her with it, she's just like, oh. I have that thing. effect on ladies. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she's like, she grabs onto you to steady herself, and her hand is all burned as well. It's EXO. 
I do know where your ship is, and I may be able to help you get it, but I need you to take me with you. You have my word. You have passage on our vessel. It's almost like you lifted two tons of weight off of her shoulders. My name is Gale. I am Kazunak. If you guys are going to planning on going that way, Khan Laroon will get you. Who is this Khan Laroon? She looks around. She's like, I'd rather not talk here. Follow me. I follow. Yeah. She knows where the ship is. It didn't stop us from going forward, so we're still going forward. Well, I'm still going forward. No. Nobody, nobody informed me. You would... <laughs> That's right. You didn't see anything. I just assumed I turned around and walked somewhere and started a conversation. People would notice. Two of us did and stopped, so he might suddenly feel really lonely. Slower. It's Piva. What? You notice he's talking to a figure across the road. We ain't picking up no pets. We have a friendly source of intel. Come on. Fine. When they all get up to us, I'll be like, this is Gail. She's going to help us. She has information. I look right at the dud. She knows where the ship is and will help us get it. If Where's my ship? Can't... Where's my ship? <laughs> I stopped him. I won't let him get to her. If... We take her off world with us. I've already agreed. Fine. Where's my ship? We're going to a safe place to talk. Calm yourself. Forgive him. He smokes too many death sticks. <laughs> and he hasn't had any to today. It's a nasty habit. <sighs> uh huh. Let's go. She begins limping away. She leads you down a block and then around a corner. We were ambushed. To basically, <laughs> like all the other houses that you've walked by are fairly a stand, standardized construction. They're all basically the same size, dimensions. They're well put together. The structure that she leads you to is practically a lean-to made of wood and brush that's set up against one of these houses. Hmm. Uh, the door on it is just the cloth. Looks like it's made up of the remnants of flight suits that have been stitched together. And she creepy. She pushes it aside and goes in. I'll go in with her. I'll uh, stow my weapon and then go in. Stormtrooper. Stormtrooper. Um, at this point, I'm mostly just following. I don't, I don't really exactly have a thing that turns down the sound of my voice coming out of the helmet, so I'm not saying much. <laughs> okay. It's, with all of you in this room, in this structure, it's fairly cramped. Like, it's, it might be 10 feet by 10 feet. It's not much bigger than, like, a child's bedroom. She has, like, a camp stove set up and a few accoutrements here and there. But by and large, there's no furniture at all. She has a hammock that's strung up in the corner. Looks like it was braided from salvaged wiring, yeah, which she sits in. And she sort of motions for you guys to sit wherever you'd like, which is basically any part of the floor. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll crouch near her. I'll try not to destroy the structure when I sit down. I'm just going to be standing by the door, kind of. Uh, nobody's out there. Okay. <laughs> Beva is staying close to the door. As well. Her hand on her blaster. High five. <laughs> <laughs> you two are so cute. I just figured... Although she appears to be more concerned with the woman's condition than you are. Oh, no. But no. She's, she's also cognizant of the dangerous situation that you guys are in. No, I'm more like, eh, eh, all right. her, I don't know. The tufts of her hair that are remaining are black. And her eyes are a brilliant blue, like the color of the Caribbean. I've been to that planet. It's really nice during the summer. And you realize when she sits down that her limp is also an old injury because her legs just don't bend right. She has a stringed instrument against the wall. It looks like she also built that herself because it looks like it's made from salvage parts. Hmm. Uh, and she ha and the other possession that you notice, because she takes it off before she sits down, is she has a mechanic's tool belt. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you guys are all sitting around, she lifts her hood back up. Sweet baby Jesus, thank you. 
<laughs> You've been on a ship with this, and you're worried about that. That keeps a helmet on, and this one doesn't have enough shades to darken the glasses to keep it from looking like he's staring. <laughs> <laughs> Is it still rude in this galaxy to ask somebody what happened? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Depends on how you ask. Yeah, we're all thinking it. <laughs> Conlaroon was my shipmate. You're from the other wreck? Yes. Five years ago, we had a malfunction. <sighs> or op operator error from the navigator. I don't... I'm not still to this day not 100% sure. But we dropped out of hyperspace practically on top of this planet. And, uh, well, our pilot was either inept or panicked, and down we came, and we crashed. Khan pulled me out of the wreck. I think it was the same night. Uh, I don't remember exact time. That, that period is very fuzzy in my memory, but it was that night or the next night. We were attacked by the by the Gonquin. Luckily, we still had power in our blasters, and they were using stone weapons. So, while they took out several of us, we were able to repel them. After some time, I I I, I don't know. Slowly, we started to be taken out, but Khan Khan found locals that he could talk to and they took us in none of our medics none of our medical supplies survived the crash and these these people know nothing of human physiology they were kind at first willing to help us out and for a while it was good I was recovering as poorly as I was but recovering and making friends it was shocking how how many of them spoke basic and how well. Why that was the case, however, turned out to be how I ended up here. She motions to the shack. We found out that years ago, a Jedi crashed here with his apprentice. He, the master, died shortly after. The stab rack out there? Statue? No. That was the apprentice. Ooh. But slowly they... It, he They worked with the natives and for whatever reason, didn't bother to try to leave. And so the Zabrak basically became a community leader, as Jedi are wont to do. Want and tend to. And uh, he built up their basic understanding of technology. I mean, being a Jedi, he took for granted the, the effect of magic on a people. Mm -hmm. That technology has the poisoning effect, to make magic accessible for everyone. And so they wanted it, and they wanted more of it, more of it. Mm -hmm. To the Zebrak's credit, or maybe because he just didn't know any better, the advancement that he put them through was nothing compared to what Khan did. You see, the Zebrak's master, Amon Calamari, recorded a bunch of stuff for his apprentice, lessons, things of that nature, for him to study as he grew up and grew in the forest. And for quite a while, the, the elders of this village looked to that hologram and that hollow matrix as sort of a, an oracle. Primitives. How pathetic. Yeah, maybe. I mean, most of the stuff the guy said was, you know, fairly nice stuff. Be good to one another, that kind of BS. <laughs> Which, maybe that teaching is what helped them be in the mood to help us when we crashed. But the Zabrak died decades ago. Mm -hmm. And he had trained his own apprentices. <laughs> that would be that black whatever girl we met a while ago, I guess. Riva. Yes and no. She is not of his line, exactly. Admiral is her master. And he comes from the line from the Zabrak. <laughs> He's the one with the lightsaber now? Yeah. He's the one that stole your ship. Oh, On the man. orders of Khan Laroon, I guarantee it. So why do these people listen to Khan Laroon? Taught them technology? Yeah, 